Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another tech edition of Strange Love. I'm Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week's special guest, Scott Kvitten. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Scott? It's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. It's Friday. It and is. It's Labor Day weekend, for God's sake. Happy three day weekend. That's right. Yeah. So tonight, Scott's going to talk to us about OpenID and the dupe. Go. Go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you a question that I haven't asked anybody. We've talked about OpenID on the show quite a bit, but I've never asked anyone to explain in the simplest terms possible what is OpenID. Oh, wow. Okay. And I should be able to do this too. Uh, you know, OpenID, the goal of OpenID is to make it easier for users just to sign into websites. And uh, the, the use case that people sort of have to deal with is you show up on a site and you want to do something, comments or, uh, you know, engage or, or, you know, find out travel information or post a photo or whatever. And you have to sign up for the site and then you have to go, you know, register your email address with them and click the link and do all these different things. And so the goal with OpenID is to sort of like, get ahead of that and mm-hmm. just use your open ID, sign in and go. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been about three years in the making and, uh, we've learned a lot, um, about open ID and, and how it's being used and what's good and what's not. And, uh, uh, I can talk more about that a little later, but yeah, so I think that's probably the, the easiest way to explain it. So how does someone go about, because that explains what you do with an open ID, but not what it is. So how do you go about getting an open ID? Um, probably the best way to get an open ID um, and the shameless self promotion would be to go to myvadoop, of course, dot com. But uh, what what you can do if you really want to check out uh, a lot of the different providers because each one has different things that they might offer offer you, um, you can go to openid.net slash get, and there's a list of a bunch of providers there and and kind of the pros and cons of why you'd want to choose those. Um, and that could be much much better than it is today, but um, that's kind of what we have right now. See, that's a really important thing to know because when I first, the reason I first found out about OpenID was that in order to sign up for Treasurelicious, you have to have an OpenID. It's the only way you can sign up for it. We're so proud of Miss Burroughs for that. And so I wanted to sign up for Treasurelicious. I had no idea what I was doing. And I chose the first thing on the list of these places have OpenID. I just chose the first thing that was available, which wasn't something I ever, ever used. It's just something I happened to have a logged in for. And I used it, and then I realized how inconvenient it was because I've never logged into it. Right, exactly. And, and you know, we've learned, so the, you know, to sort of get down into the details of it, the, the, an open ID is actually a URL, so it's a domain Correct. name. And that's painful, just beyond painful for users. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when you start talking about, you know, when you look at early adopters, like, yeah, whatever, my, I have a blog and I can understand a URL, you just go to my blog, whatever, it's the same thing. Um, but for now that we're sort of reaching this critical mass, we need to sort of make it easier for users to use this stuff. And uh, so we've started to look at different ways of doing this, whether it's tying it into sort of identity in the browser so that you'd show up on a website and it would say, hey, this site wants you to log in. And and it, in your browser would just know for you because you sort of train mm-hmm. your browser to do this. Um, and then the other one is being able to just use an email address as your open ID. Because a lot of the times, if you have a Yahoo account, like a Yahoo email address, you also have a Yahoo Open ID, mm-hmm. um, and users think in that username at you know whatever dot com. So uh, trying to take advantage of that. So a lot, a lot of things happening. You know, we've realized that we've come really far, and but people don't get domain names. Um, so we need to do, take the next step, which is like start dealing with usability. So that's where we're at. So what's um, so what's the relationship between Open ID and OAuth then? Because they're two different things. Yeah, right? they're they're totally different. Um, but there's you know a lot of the folks who are involved in OAuth are involved in OpenID. Um, OpenID actually requires the user to be involved in the interaction. So the sort of the three players in OpenID are uh, the user, um, the site you're trying to log into, and the site that you you have your account with. So there's these three. Whoa, I just totally <laughs> faux pod. Uh, hit my mic. Um, you have those three pieces there. And, and the, the problem is, is sometimes I may want to have Flickr um, do something on my behalf, like be in charge of some, you know, all of my photos. Or I might have a geolocation service that I want to, to upload my zip code for me. But I'm not around. I want it to be automated. And so that's where OAuth comes in. OAuth allows you to 
um, sort of delegate authority for you know authorization basically into certain parts of your account and act on your behalf when you're not around so oauth is more like a machine to machine communication versus open id is actually the end user action right exactly and and what's what we found today is that actually open id and oauth are are just a really complementary so there are a lot of folks, and, and MyVadoop actually will support this pretty soon, and a couple other providers as well, which is uh, having your OpenID provider, when you go to some site and log in, you should also, you could, at the same time that you say, hey, I'd like to have some information about you, you know, like your email address or your nickname or whatever, you should also be able to say, hey, I'd like to be able to be in charge of this these bits of information for you. Is that okay? And they don't need to know anything about OAuth or anything like that. It just needs to work. And uh, so having your OpenID provider and your OAuth provider be in the same place is very, very powerful. I think I heard it described on another podcast that you were on as like the links down the side of your your page and that those would just sort of like follow you throughout the web as far as like OAuth going. So so here's my here's my bookmarks, here's my Flickr account. Right, right, my, right. It's just kind of one login. Well, and that actually even gets to... Um, some of the other, so, so one of the, I think the most important or the most powerful part of OpenID is that it's a, it's a destination, it's an endpoint. Um, and that's just is very, very geeky. But because people don't understand URLs, um, so we're trying to move away from that. So if, if people can sign in with their email addresses or whatever, but, but those URLs are still very important from the developer standpoint because if I can, <clears throat> if I can go to some site and log in and authenticate, and that site can then go, okay, they just proved who they are. I can point back there and say, okay, I know that this is you. You just signed in. Can you give me maybe a list of your contacts? Or maybe tell me where you do your photo stuff. Or can you tell me what you know you, you do for access control or whatever? Um, and it can, with a, with a certain amount of, of uh, uh, you know, a certain level of um, trust, say, okay, great, I can grab those things. And, so, and that, that, that is the OAuth? piece then or uh that... well actually I mean, it, it wouldn't the really matter it could piece. be it could be either or both okay. um, for, if you're just logging in for the first time it could be the open id but if maybe later the site wants to go check all of the the contacts it could do that through with oauth when the when the user's not around with their permission of course hmm. yeah so. so so let me ask you yahoo and google have all they've taken over little bits and pieces of the internet different you know some photo places and blogging and and, and is that kind of just, you know, a, an earlier version? You know what I mean? You log into Yahoo, and then you go and you log into your Flickr, you log into your upcoming. Right, and right, and right. they all know who you are by the use of your email and the same thing with Google and, and uh, Blogger. Is that kind of like the early stage of that? I, I think it is. And, and what's interesting is <clears throat> for each of those, you know, Google and Yahoo and Microsoft and AOL, they each, you know, try to duplicate what each of them did, right? So mm-hmm. they all have a photo service. Mm-hmm. They all have a finance service. They all have a whatever. They, they all have these different things and they duplicate them over and over again. And I, I don't want to, as a user, have to sign up for all those services in there and move my data around, recreate it, refine my friends, do all those different things. And so what's interesting about OpenID is that it, it sort of shifts the the paradigm to being user centric, so rather I'm than charge owner centric, yeah, or silo centric or yeah. site centric, right? And so now, <clears throat> I prove that I am this person, and then I I maybe have my photos over at Flickr and my finance stuff over at Google and my um, my permissions over at you know some other site, um, but I prove who I am at some point that I am in control of mm-hmm. and can choose, and from there uh, uh, can you know point people at other things, so. What percentage of what you use online, personally and professionally, whatever, what you actually use online is OpenID enabled? That's or a really open? Good question. Um, I would probably say probably 30% of the stuff because I try and, you know, spend a lot of time on sites that, that use OpenID for sure. Yeah. Um, I actually was really excited that Ustream is using OpenID now. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. No, I, yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, the Although person, I have, who, they have a really, I the person who logs really into job. Ustream the most in yeah. this house. I haven't moved mm-hmm. to the U. They, I think they implemented it after I got my Ustream sure, sure, account, sure, sure, sure. but uh, but I didn't notice that Ustream is mm-hmm. using it. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's it's coming along. You know, the 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 graph is the hockey stick, and that's what you want to see. Uh, it's, is is Blogger probably one of the most popular? Platforms I would say it's probably one of the one ID? of the biggest ones out there for sure. Um, 
Magnolia has a lot of mm-hmm. uh, OpenID love there, um, and, and they actually are doing some really cool stuff around using the email address and other things. Um, and then just, you know, I think it's something on the, the order of about 25,000 sites right now that support it. Um, and it's, you know, it's increasing at a rate of about 5% every week. And uh, or How guess, difficult yeah, is it to week. implement? Um, you know, it depends. We, we've, uh, there's, there's a lot of libraries out there for, for implementing this for the developer side. And then those libraries have then been integrated into sort of plugins for things like, you know, open source content management systems like Drupal and WordPress and others. And uh, slowly but surely, it's sort of starting to, to get there where it's going to be parts of, of these frameworks. Django, which is a Python uh, a rapid development uh, uh, framework, um, Ruby on Rails, all of them have this built in where you just say, okay, great, I'm building an application and I want OpenID. <laughs> Suck it in. And, uh, but it's getting there. You know, we definitely, have, uh, we definitely have a long way to go in you know, support for all the different things that we need to be able to do with OpenID and, and deal with usability and security for sure. So, for so, good. so you bring up security. So that's always a question, right? You know, I, I'm using my my you you know my URL or mm-hmm. my or my mm-hmm. Gmail account, right? And my account gets hacked. Uh, now what? I mean, is there is it still in its nascent stage of security, or is um I you know I would say it's as secure as um I, I would say it's definitely not a step backwards. Um, you know, you you look at how we do password recovery today for any site and you know the vast majority of users have two passwords they have one password that they use everywhere and then they have their really secure password that they use in like a couple secure secret places yeah, no secret surely password. not <laughs> and uh, I, dr normal does not do that at i all. follow the instructions and each and every site that i log into oh, in well the done. entire universe is a different That's password right. <laughs> no. includes she uppercase and lowercase characters and, uh, and punctuation and numbers exactly well and, and just passwords are painful right i mean you know we, we all know they are and and uh, there was actually the new york times did an article on this a couple weeks ago and they quoted me in it and the guy called me and he was just angry uh talking about how open id was the scourge to the earth and, and he he already knew what he was gonna he, he just wanted a, a fl- you know he wanted a he quote thought it was would, evil yeah, I mean, he really, he, he had already made up his mind. And I just sort of said, look, <laughs> you've clearly made up your mind here. It was you know, goodbye passwords, you aren't a good defense. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. And I, I think people would agree with that. You know, the, the idea of changing your password every you know day or every two weeks or whatever. I change um, my password when I forget what it is. And I have to, no, I'm, I'm being honest here. When I change my password, it's because I forget what it is because I haven't used a site in a month sure. or six and I have to get that site then to send me my password and tell me what it is. It's the only time I forget them. Right, and when you think about that, like if I, um, you know, if I hacked your email address, I could probably get into anywhere that you've ever been, right? Yeah. Right, I mean, you think about that, right? Don't so hack it's, my it's still, emails, that, it's still that single point Which of Which email address? <laughs> <laughs> right. I do have yeah. more than one. How many email addresses does Cami Chaos have? <laughs> um, no. So do no, you, no, I, yeah, I mean, do, I, I have a couple, I think. Anyways, I if you remember. envision OpenID, um, you know, we're talking about public websites on the web, uh, social networks. Uh, do you envision this out at a time where this hits corporate America? Because, uh, you know, we're talking about what we do on the web with social networks every day, but we all go to work, we all log into our email and our sure, corporate sure, networks sure, sure. and talk about remembering passwords and, you know, every two weeks the IT pings you, you must change your password. And it's Thou big. shalt. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I think OpenID is going to go the way of um, SMTP. Um, does everybody know what SMTP is in the room? Yes, mm. I do. Can you tell me, please? It's in, email. It's in, email. In case, in case our listeners don't know. No, no, no that's great. What no, does I, SMTP stand for? Uh, it is Simple, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Thank God, you. I, that's right. I didn't think I knew that, actually. Okay. <laughs> now, what's uh, IMAP? <laughs> quick, quick, oh, IMAP. God, I don't know. Tell Internet us. mail. App, r- the protocol? Bar, is exactly. there a protocol in there protocol. somewhere? Uh, uh, no, I don't know. Um, Pop? Oh no. So, so the idea is that is that the users and you know, especially when you start talking about the enterprise, it just has to work. Like users don't go on the internet looking for security. Users go on the internet looking for solutions, and they expect them to be secure. Yeah. And and I think that's that's an, an important component that a lot of people sort of overlook. And uh, yeah, yeah. So if you'll permit me to be a little bit nerdy for just a moment, not even nerdy, but geeky, really. The first time I. That once I got over my initial using the wrong source for my open ID and I found the correct source for my open ID that was convenient and happy for me to use, 
I suddenly felt like I was on Star Trek. Like, <laughs> I started awesome. I started going to places. OH, OH just like I have to OH that. Okay, no, it's I'm fine. Just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't kidding. I, I, I went, I started going to places <laughs> that I knew would let me use OpenID just because they would let me use OpenID. Sure, sure. Because it was like Cheers or Star Trek and everyone knew my name. Right. I walked through a door and, you know, welcome, Yay, Cammy Chaos. Cammy, Cammy yeah. wants to go to level C deck. I believe it was the first time the silicon florist um, linked to your. Oh, you that know, was? That was the first mom time. Blog, it was the first like, time that Rick ever yeah. linked to my blog was because. It was open ID enabled, which had nothing to do and with you me. You worked very and hard for that too. <laughs> exactly, it had everything on to the do with <laughs> with blogger <laughs> accepting open ID. But I was right, thrilled right. that it did. And then I ran around looking for open ID things I could do. And it's I was funny the guy I was who sad. actually who runs the the Google the blogger platform for mm-hmm. Google was the guy who did it did open ID at AOL. Oh yeah. And then he left and went to Google and did it at and blogger. implemented it there. Ah, yeah. I see. So now we just got to get him to go somewhere else. Yes. Just keep Microsoft. Them along. No, just kidding. Yeah, there you go. Go and, you know, plant your little Johnny apple seed of open ID all around the world. Exactly. Um, and, you know, when I look at this thing, I uh, so, so I'm on the Open ID Foundation board and, and involved in, in all that stuff You there. are? That's not uh, in my notes the, at all. Oh, really? Oh, you're kidding. No, it's really, it is. It's oh, in my notes. It. It's right here. Chairman of the board, Open ID Foundation. Yeah, it sounds a lot cooler than it is. It means I have to do, like, a lot of the work. Oh. Sweet. So uh, you, it's okay, though. I love you don't it. get the glory, but you get the work? You get the no, fancy I mean, I, title. I do. I get a really <laughs> fancy title. That's good. Um, but... I think what what a lot of folks, especially folks who are using OpenID and and a lot of folks who are working on things like OAuth and Portable Contacts API and XRDS Simple and all these things, are are realizing that OpenID is just one component. It's sort of a foundational component of a lot of these things that we're going to put together to create um, effectively, I think, distributed social networking. Mm -hmm. Because social networking, in reality, is just a feature for the Mm -hmm. internet. And I am myself, and I'm going to go to different sites, and I want to be social on the travel site or social on the photo site, and I want to just be myself and bring my friends and all of my stuff with me. Uh, and so these standards, these open protocols like OpenID and OAuth and others, are what are going to make that happen. Users will never know or care that they're there, but they're very important for this interoperability so that the users are. What kind of a time frame thing. do you think? There is for that, for it to be viable for a person to just go from place to place on the internet and and have it recognize who they are and not have to create a whole new system of logins to be who they are already anywhere else. I, you know, that's toughy. I, I think I think it's going to be. I, I think we're going to have a sort of a split world for a long time, or or a world where you can you can do both probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and I sort of liken it to what we've had with um, you know Windows and Linux. Um, Windows and Linux, neither of them are going to go away, mm-hmm. um, but they interoperate now so that you know you could be in front of either one of them and probably still get your work done. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that's kind of what we're going to see as well. Um, uh, yeah. In the real world, it, it reminds me a lot of you go to the supermarket and you can write a check still. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, yeah. you can hand oh, write man. a check or you can use your bank card. I'm always, I'm always behind those people, by the way. I'm always FYI. behind the guy writing the check too. But at, in this day and age, they take the check. And they turn it into a bank card anyway. Most stores do. You you write a check. There's a few that don't. But you write a check and then they scan it through. They scan the numbers and they check your bank account yeah. just like they would with your bank card anyway. And so I, I always kind of picture it, you know, in a physical, tangible way as writing a check and going through and filling out all the information and even maybe right. filling out the check that the bank gives you before you have your checks ready where you have to fill out the bank account. Exactly. And you, you, know, have to you fill know what else is interesting out. is when you go to the banks now too, they, they actually would prefer you not do the less cash. Mm-hmm. On the deposit slip yes. from a from a check, they would rather have you do zero and then use your card at the desk with the mm-hmm. with the teller person. Then, anyways, because it's easier totally to it's task. easier totally to totally no, task. but it is it's easier to authenticate who you are. Right. They know who you are. You have that card. You know your number. Right. You can that that's just the tangible side of it for me. Right. Well, we've been authenticating for years, right? Whether it was at the bank, correct, uh, with your signature, and now on the web. I want to get back to something. Hit me. And that is your your what you said about the whole social networking landscape being a feature on the internet. Because I think some people, or at least some CEOs of some companies, <laughs> like Facebook, <laughs> uh, I mean, the guy's Fox like News, seven years old. I mean, my, like on MySpace, on. <laughs> uh, Apple. Um, would, Apple is actually not a very social company. 
but they they did release mobile me recently which is not so, very social right uh, right not social it's very user centric but it's not very social but also very you know supposedly distributed so i mean I, I, my point is i think there are companies there that may disagree with that sure, i mean sure, do, you, sure, sure. do you see do you see synergy there down the road that it's it's okay you know uh, as you build the open systems Oh, for out. sure. I mean, I, I think that. Uh, so, so let's. I mean, let's think com- about. It. Let's let's will put this companies in be able to make money Absolutely. with this vision? For sure, for sure. I mean, it's it's. I, I think the difference is, and and the real the real magic there is going to be when you cut the user into the user being able to share their attention data or or who they are with advertisers right. and slice them in for a piece of that, right? Um, I I would love to get. We've just now become the Gilmore Gang. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh no no no! Yeah. <laughs> Let's get on. Oh, I'm not going to even go there. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, but but I think that there's uh, uh, there's a lot of potential there for putting the users at the center of this thing and, and giving them control. Sure. Um, you know, as far as these big sites are concerned, you know, let's let's remember that at the. Um, does anybody remember when Facebook was created? It wasn't even around at the last election. after Friendster. No. Yeah. Two, it, February 2004 oh, I was, on was when it was created. for a couple of days. Think about that. 2004? Mm-hmm. February 2004. Wow. That was also the same, uh, that same year in August, Google IPO'd, right? Do you mm-hmm. remember this? Wow. Like, yeah. Think about this, right? I that was at the last election very busy and the last Olympics, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so what I think people don't, like four years from now, I mean, I, I you know, whatever, I hate to use elections and Olympics. It's like, the, you know, these are good you know points what? to sort of it's look back. You know what? It's a constant, though. I mean, it is a it's a constant in Absolutely. our lives. And uh, and I think, you know, four years from now, we'll, we'll look back and go, oh, yeah, you remember Facebook, you know? Mm. And, uh, mm. uh, you know, I, I just think, I think that's what it's going to be. And um, as far as those companies playing along and playing nice, you know, they all, they're all involved in conversations. Um, so I, I'm part of a group of people, um, a lot of the same people who've been doing a lot of these protocols like OAuth and OpenID and others, and we've, we've dealt with a lot of pain in using these technologies around large companies and then also making sure that individuals and the companies are protected in using them. And so uh, at the open source conference here in Portland uh, in late July, we launched the Open Web Foundation. Oh, uh, right. Which is, um, and we've just, we've done a bunch of work lately. We've just incorporated and we've created a board of directors and things like that. And uh, it's, it's uh, again, it's, it's basically a set of rules or a framework for um, everybody to come to the table and play nice together. And I, I think it's uh, uh, it, it's going really well, and, and you know Facebook is there, uh, uh, Yahoo, Google, and others are all at the table, and they realize that interoperability is is absolutely critical for um, for all of them. That's a good thing you have going with you, because anytime you network anything, and I know this based on other experience that I have in networking, you all <laughs> got to play nice, even if you're two, three, four, five different vendors. For sure, for uh, sure. Well, and, and the know. key is you know the the depending on who you talk to in the organizations, it could go, you know, it could go well, it could not. And, and we've been really lucky to, to find the people uh, who all get it. Um, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and they fight their internal struggles and we fight our internal struggles. Um, and we find this sort of happy ground. Um, and uh, I, I'm actually really excited because, you know, we're, we're, we're looking sort of at the, you know, when the eighties were going on with software, just taking off. Right. And IBM really screwed it up because they thought it was the hardware. And, oh, weird, now there's this company out there called Microsoft. Oh, my gosh. Um, but people didn't really think, like, oh, wow, it's going to be the software. It was going to be the software. You know, it took a long time before it was too late for that to, to be reality. And now we're at turn of the century. And what people don't realize is it's the cloud. It's the data that's out in this cloud um, that's mm-hmm. going to be the secret sauce. And that's why Google is racing to build, you know, gazillions of data centers. And Microsoft has finally figured it out and dumping money into this as well. And so there's a lot of folks who are coming along saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need sort of the, the open source version of, of data portability and or control of my data. Um, otherwise, we're going to end up with another, you know, giant monopoly um, that we have to bust up. It's going to be painful to do so. It's, it's hard for me to envision a giant monopoly. Now, <laughs> e- even, I mean, even if you say Google is kind of seems to be that today i mean i think i think what you're what you're laying out is the fact that there's a lot of back and forth and there's there's always somebody down the block that's doing something i mean you know look at at twitter i mean twitter is just like this big thing you know twitter just came up you know but twitter doesn't have 
like okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go on a rant. But it's but I'm it's, gonna go on a rant. But it's socially powerful though. Sure, I, and yeah. I, I think it's a it's a leading indicator, and I would say that Evan is very good at leading yeah. indicators. He also did Blogger, mm-hmm. which you know if, if you think about it, he probably could have stuck with it a little longer, mm-hmm. kept it independent instead of being acquired by Google, mm-hmm. and it would be a significantly bigger property today. Like let's look at WordPress. WordPress.com. It, WordPress.com is going to become the platform for blogging. Period. Um, and, and it, I don't it, think he's wrong, and and. And the, the numbers, the numbers just show yeah. it. I, yeah. I think, I think this is the case, and, and I think Twitter again is a leading indicator. It's, it's a, it's a something that we see that's going to be happening in the mainstream, right. but it's not going to be Twitter, because let's be honest, Twitter can't sure. even tie their shoes, no. let alone like provide services. Well, for, like, this, this a goes, tiny chunk. This of goes users. back to the friends. When I have an Facebook entire day that I don't get a fail model. whale, <laughs> I'm like, praise the Twitter gods! I didn't yeah. see a fail whale. Oh crap! There it is. Right. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but the the model the design what what's going on there is 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 like you said it's the it's the trend. No, for it's sure, the, for sure, yeah. and, and and I uh, I like the idea of constant status updates. I like the idea of uh, friends and followers. Mm-hmm. Um, all, all of these are very important. But the problem is is uh, Twitter is really and I'm stealing this from Rail Dornfest, but. Twitter is actually made up of, of a whole bunch of different services that should actually be independent services that should be farmed out or part of the grid or part of the you know the cloud, uh, and and you know uh, the fact that I have however many followers or what uh, what kind of I don't, I'm not quite sure I understand that Twitter to me serves one one function and that is that I get to talk all day what <laughs> what functions it really I mean well, to, so to me that's what it is the, it's, it's, uh, it's not really social networking because. It's like micro social networking and micro blogging rolled into one. So, wh- what are the different functions? Uh, I of would the almost say it's, it's like instant messaging with bookmarking with you know a bunch of different things involved. But so there, there's uh, messaging around SMS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is um, well, there used to be track, right? <laughs> remember track? Do you guys remember that feature? We, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, no, I don't. What's track? We, we didn't use it so much here, but I don't. But, I want to know the, what it the is. The idea though. of track was. Um, and this is a feature they took away in May. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've, this is the other thing that kills me. Is their numbers keep going up, and they keep taking away features. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. They have to. As That's it goes amazing. up, they have to stop it's having but, things. But it's also have you noticed that the reply feature is for crap now? Oh, it's awful. I yeah, mean, awful. they should just get rid of reply entirely. Right. I mean, because why not? It, they've taken away a feature, right? Well, it doesn't work. I, I check to see who replied to what. I'm like, what on earth are you talking about? And I look at the reply, and it's always the last thing I said. Exactly. And I'm like, you're not replying to the last right. thing I said, because the last thing I said is, I'm washing my hair. And you're talking about open ID. <laughs> and well, and then, then they, acquired, tweet, they, they, they acquired <laughs> Samize, right? And, mm. and now that's gone in the yeah. toilet. Right. Right. That yeah. used to be right. great service. Oh, God, Samize works for awful. shit now. It's awful. It's just, uh, uh It yeah. makes but, me so sad, because I just love that. But I it's not it's it. not Twitter. It's it's the idea. It's it's right. It's, it, it, I think it's and it's, I think we yeah. all agree that right. You know, it's like it, and you look at Facebook as you know added status, which is effectively the same thing, yeah, but not yeah. quite the same. Um, the idea of track, what it is, is you can say, I want to track anytime somebody says um, any word. It doesn't have to be like at a word. It's just um, any word okay. anywhere in your tweet. Okay. Um, and then you would get a like text message or a page or or, or, uh, uh, or an IM or whatever. Yeah. G talk. So uh, is that like when I have my I don't remember what it's called. It's like I have Google set up anytime they use a certain phrase on the internet to email me. Yes. The phrase. It's exactly. like that, but within Twitter. In real time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I did that with bacon once, actually. Okay. I had to try to turn it off really fast. Um, but it was really handy because I could be on my phone and say track some term because mm-hmm. maybe I'm, I'm at an event, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and like, you know, South by Southwest. Oh, I'm here. I want to like track anything that has to do with South by Southwest. Well, great. I can get those. I can get those updates. Um, and uh, now, I, of course, I can't. <laughs> and that's, right. is that where hashtagging came from then? When uh, track hashtagging actually was a function of that track wasn't perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I, sometimes I want to just pick up things that that I that somebody has explicitly said is mm-hmm. an event or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is actually something Chris Messino came up with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I might be, I, I'll probably get, I'll probably get like hammered on this one, but I'm pretty sure not only did Chris do um, the at replies feature mm-hmm. for for Twitter. Oh, he, really? he recommended that, but mm-hmm. he also did the hashtags. Oh, cool. And now there's hashtags.org and there's all these other things. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris is Chris is one of those guys. He's like a freaking like idea factory. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, like people actually implement the stuff that he says, which is really cool. It's part of his uh, reality distortion field. It's very impressive. <laughs> yes. As you said in San Fran, San Fran Mag. com. Oh, I did. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yes, yeah, sanfranmag.com. I got I got so I, open it hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was, was interesting. Uh, that, that was a really good. I actually got the the, the physical 
the magazine of it actually. Um, should have brought it over actually. It was beautiful, just a beautiful article. Um, and they'd been working on that article for God, almost like six or eight months or something. And uh, fascinating, fascinating stuff. So, so we'd be remiss to not oh. talk about. Vadoop. That's oh, exactly yeah. where I wanted to go. I was going to say, we talked about all this. Lines. I can see it. And look at this. Maybe every other episode, I don the Vadoop helmet. <laughs> now, vampires are not. <laughs> and going vampires to come after cannot you. harm me. <laughs> We've established this in Vidoop a previous podcast. Because Vadoop keeps me safe from the vampires for some <laughs> it was reason. After hours, right. that's, a, that's a bullet point we don't have on the product sheet. Yeah. yeah. We should get that in there. The Vadoop yeah. helmet, for those of. How many Vadoop helmets are were out made? in the wild? Uh, I think we had about 40 made. Okay. Actually. Wow. And yeah, was that did. just for Lunch 2.0? It was just for Lunch 2.0, wow. and it was um, it was Mitchell Savage's idea, actually, and he's somebody you guys got to get on Strange Love Live. He's awesome. Um, Tolson uh, is living here now, and uh, I said, hey, let's do Lunch 2.0, and I was like, God, we don't have the office. It's not in shape. He's like, no, no, no. One of our guys back at um, in Tulsa said, oh, geez, let's let's do these hard hats. And I was like, oh. Genius! Like we're under it was construction. A great Anyways. idea. It was a fantastic idea, yeah. and everyone kind of wanted one. And they gave some out, and then there were some extras, and they were like, you know, well, everyone was whatever, like, whatever, have like, Are one. you sure you can take that? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> they were like, well, you know, have one. It's like they're hard. And then I'm, I'm the getting ready to leave, and Aaron Hockley was like, yeah, it's okay. Get a hard hat. For your <laughs> totally. Kid. Heck yeah. Get one, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I will. And I grabbed one, and I brought it home for my daughter. Who was like, I have a hard hat. She's like an orange Bob the Builder style hard hat. She oh, had nice. no interest in the Vadoop hard hat. Yeah, so uh, I got yeah, to keep it and I was one. thrilled. One and, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't wear it that much, but he'll yeah. still come around. Yeah. So what's going on with Vadoop? Uh, Vadoop has think, everyone moved? We, we haven't moved yet. Oh, uh, so tell us the tell us the tale, the saga of Vidu. I'll I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the Portland move. How's that sound? That sounds good to me. So uh, in in short, Vadoop's going great. It's uh, things are going really well. Lots of things happening around uh, what's going on with Vadoop. But um, I joined the company in February, uh, and Luke Sontag, who's one of the founders, came to me uh, came to visit Portland on his way up to Seattle just to say hi, and you know just see how I'm doing and everything. And I was going to be working out of my basement in Hillsdale. And, uh, you know, I took him around the city and introduced him to some people, you know, Raven Zachary and Dave Hirsch at Jive and a bunch of other places. And uh, next thing I know, he's on the phone with his other co-founder, Joel Norvell. And he's like, oh, my God, you got to come out here. You got to check this place out. This is amazing. Da, 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 da. Next thing, like, Joel's out like a week or two later. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks later, they're starting to talk about moving the company out here. And I'm like, what? And... And that was that. And so that quickly. It was really quick, and and they had already, they had already sort of tapped the the tech um, pool in uh, Tulsa already, and they, they knew they were going to move. They were looking at uh, Austin or Seattle or even San Francisco, um, but they all they came out here to visit. Uh, the executive team came out to visit, and they loved it. <clears throat> and then we flew out the rest of the literally flew out the rest of the company in like teams of twelve or mm-hmm. you know fifteen. Uh, with their SOs, and they all, you know, they all really enjoyed it. So, in what's today, Friday, five, six days, uh, there is a caravan leaving from Tulsa, and there are eight U-Haul trucks. Wow. Four or five RVs. We have a video crew going along. They'll be doing nightly uploads of videos. Um, we're gonna have a Tumblr page with tweets and you know bookmarks and all the video and and photos and stuff. Uh, we have a. a a crew that's going to be like sort of uh, an advanced team that's in charge of like setting up base camps as we go and like getting the food ready and everything. And uh, we're going to come into town. We don't know what we're going to do actually. Um, <laughs> when we come into town, we actually don't know where we're going to kind of. Are you going to be a part of this? Are you going to fly out and come? <clears throat> well, I'm actually speaking into Inverge next oh. week. Uh, and that's the day that they leave from Tulsa. So what I'm going to do is on Friday next week, I'm going to fly to Boise and meet them there. And then drive from Boise Fantastic. out. Um, so really, really excited about it. And if anybody has any ideas for what we should do on Sunday, I think it's the seventh of September when we get into town, like where we should go, where we should like, you know, we'd love to get a bunch of people out. Throw and just a say, big party. There we'll throw a big be... party or have like a finish line or like a what? Yeah, you know, I don't know, like a ramp sign. We I don't know. We something. can all stand out there with banners and cheer. Yeah. Sunday the seventh, you say. I'm looking at my so, calendar. <laughs> So does this happen a lot? Do you generally like 
Scott Kavitan joins a company, and then two <laughs> weeks later, the company's like, "Do you guys have, do you have a we spare bedroom? Can started? we like no, move in your? Do you have a basement, guy? It, you know, it was more. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, the, the company itself was already sort of prepped to move out of Tulsa. Um, as far as like Portland, I, you know, I, I'm lucky to be in Portland, um, and Portland sells itself. I, I, there's nothing I have to do to sell Portland. I mean, I mean, oh my gosh, you like you Portland gotta, is pretty awesome. It, you know, it really is, and, I, and I, it, we're, we're in this kind of renaissance phase right now where we're still a sleeper city. I mean, people still talk about San Francisco and, and Seattle, and, and we're really quiet here. And it was actually really funny. I had a bunch of people visiting from San Francisco, and they went to Backspace. And I said, meet me at Backspace, and I'll give you the Port Vangelis tour, mm-hmm. sort of the tour of the city. And they went there, and the guy, like, talks to them. He's like, hey, you guys must be from out of town. He's, they're, like, you know, getting the coffee and stuff. They're like, yeah, we're from San Francisco. He's like, oh. It's awful here. You'd hate it. There's no <laughs> jobs. Uh, the city's just crumbling. Da, 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 da. Go home. Go home. You know. And, and then, then you know. And I know this guy. And I come in, and, and he's like, "Oh, you're with them." And he's like, "Oh, then just ignore what I said." <laughs> and it was pretty funny. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about the technology behind Vidoop. Oh, I'd love to. Um, so uh, we've been focused really on, uh, uh, you know creating corporate grade security for the consumer web. So in other words, making it easier for sort of my mom or the lay user to be able to secure what they do online without having to remember these, these crazy long passwords. Uh, and so we have this, this technology that's sort of a, a, you know, picture your password kind of thing, which is uh, instead of having to remember a big long password, you remember these categories. So maybe like boats, trains, and cars. And then you'd be presented with a, a grid of images. And from there, you would select the boat the train in the car, and, and then that would authenticate you. And every time that grid of images loads, um, it's a different set of images, and they're all in different locations. So you can deal with things like fishing and man in the middle and all these kinds of things um, without having it be sort of a difficult thing. Like, you have to remember multi, you know, case And it's contextual, and right? Yeah. So it's like exactly. case, it uses what the brain does so well that machines don't do well. Yeah, the, the brain is really good at uh, uh, sort of... Um, you know, recognition as opposed to recalling things. And mm-hmm. so um, that's much easier to do that. And then, and then what's really interesting for us is uh, the way that we do it is we, we actually license the technology for one thing. We have, you know, um, some IP around it. Um, but we also uh, do some sponsorships around it. So the, the car category, for example, uh, is actually sponsored by Smart Car. So mm-hmm. anytime there's a car that comes up, you, you see a Smart Car in there. And it doesn't, like, scream at you and say it's a Smart Car. But you look and you go, oh, that's, that's a car. And, uh, and and sponsors are willing to, to pay for those kinds of That's things. That's a really so. clever use of advertising. It's, yeah. It's very clever. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's really clever. It's I much more clever, clever than like, you know, huge soda ad in a movie. I'm drinking this soda. Right, exactly. It's it's just sort of a new way of doing it. And, uh, you know, we, we know this isn't, not everybody's going to want to do it this way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're actually working on a couple, like actually several different ways of, of being able to authenticate um, without having to remember a big long password, taking advantage of the fact that you carry your phone with you wherever you go, or um, <clears throat> and there's a bunch of different things that you can do a phone call, so you get like a, a, some you know hey if somebody reads back some wor- numbers to you and you type them in, hmm. um, or if the fact that you answered the phone um, that would be proof enough that you should be able to log in those kinds of things. Um, that's really interesting. <clears throat> yeah, that's a that's a really interesting. So in in. Who's who's using Vadoop right now, or using the technology? You've got a few. Yeah, we large we have players. we have a, a couple customers. Um, uh, we have Charles Schwab and their retirement services mm-hmm. uses it, which is a platform that they actually uh, farm out um, to lots of other banks. They they actually will use the technology themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we actually unfortunately don't have any numbers on that because they actually farm it out themselves. It's like farming out our technology to somebody else. And uh, who else? Uh, AOL uses it, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. which is very exciting. Um, and then uh, some sort of the Web 2.0-ish sites like Claim ID and uh, ClickPass um, also have uh, uh, you know arrangements with us. So it's very cool. It's it's good stuff. It's going really really well. We're excited. We have a, a lot of stuff happening, um, and just you know a fantastic team of folks. Um, you know I, I have to say it's a it's a, a great great management team, and then and then everybody you know all the way down to, to everybody who's doing everything in the company so far. So mm-hmm. very excited to have everybody here. And you you keep hiring on a few people and We do. We just yeah. uh, we just hired um uh, uh Infovore 
at Infovore, who's going to yeah. be our hello um, Infovore, yes, hello Troy, uh, which I'm really excited about. Now, oh, by the way, I have your um, shirts. Come pick them up this weekend. <laughs> um, and uh, and then we've also uh, I don't think I can say who it is yet, but we've just hired a new VP of Sales, which oh. is very very exciting. Ooh, for a us. secret VP of Sales. A secret VP of Sales. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't. I don't have the clearance on it. I don't have another say drink. Yeah. We'll, we'll sweat it out of you. <laughs> we'll get it out of me. <laughs> we need the well, exclusive. No one listens right? to after some, hours anyway. I, I will right. say I'm. I'm just. I'm so excited about uh, uh, the team that we have and and all the people that we brought on. Um, you know, just uh, it's just great. It's just fantastic. Everybody from you know everybody across the whole team has just been absolutely stellar, and, and I still think the you know the best is yet to come for sure. So, what's your role there? Uh, yeah, what is my role? I, you know, it's funny because my, <laughs> my, my my mother calls me and she'll say, "What what do you do?" And uh, and I still don't really have a good answer for that. Um, but uh, my, my 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 title is VP of Open Platforms. Uh, really what that means is I, I spend a lot of time out with these open technology communities trying to engage them and get them, um, you know, all on the same page, you know, getting Google, Yahoo, and all these other big companies together. Uh, and, and then having us be involved in that helps us develop our products so that we can take advantage of this market that's being created. Um, so it's it's kind of a t-shirt and jeans business development role um, with, a, with a geeky slant, really. I think that's the best way to describe T-shirt it. and jeans development role. I like that. Business development. Yeah. 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 That's nice. It's Portland, right? I can I can say T-shirt and jeans, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Is there anywhere in Portland that you can't go in T-shirt and jeans? I know. It's funny. Like, well, I was looking on Yelp the other day, and it's like they have, like, the category for, like, oh, I need to wear a sport coat to this or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> and I tried to find somewhere <laughs> in the city. In and there were, like, two places that you had to have a sport There's, like, coat. a steakhouse in yeah. Portland that wants you to dress up and maybe... I don't maybe some what's the other place? I don't know, I think it's like a country club or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, Portland's not fake. They don't yeah. really stand on Which I, I just love. Yeah. Well it's been lovely to have you on our uh, on our tech edition. I want to make a note for everyone who's listening that tomorrow there are two lovely events happening. The Portland Pie Off. And you can get information on that at pie dash off dot blogspot dot com. Happens three PM at Washington Park. And the anti-prom, and you can get information on that by going to upcoming.yahoo.com and searching for anti-prom. That happens at 8 o'clock tomorrow, and it is um, a charity event that's going to benefit Liberty Hall and the Luke Dorf Healing Community. It's $5 to get in. They're going to have a bunch of bands. It should be a good time. Thank you all for listening. Thanks a lot, Scott. For Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. The Tech Podcast. Yeah. Good night, everybody.